Hello and welcome to Seeker Black People Meeting, episode five. It's Friday the 13th. I had a white friend text me this morning. He said, Niles, what are you gonna do for Friday the 13th? It's such a special and scary night. I said, not a damn thing, bro. I'm black, every night in this country is scary. I'm moving on to sports. How about them Cowboys, right? Dallas Cowboys massive Jerry Jones, I mean, owner Jerry Jones, <laughs> publicly stated that his players, if they are caught on the knee during the national anthem, they're automatically benched. So. Jerry, that makes me think, what bench is Candy going to be on this weekend? Uh, because of Jerry and other owners that are like-minded, P. Diddy now wants to buy an NFL team. Uh, Diddy going to run through some complications here because the owners have to vote as a collective to bring the new owner in. And the way the NFL handles black leadership is just like we handle your Surat. To stay safe, we can only have a little bit at a time. And now, I think what we should do is we should make Diddy as rich as possible, right? Make him undeniable. So we, I'm calling on everybody. We need to stream Bad Boys for Life, and we need to drink as much Syrah as possible this weekend. Stay safe. Stay responsible. Don't drive. But we need to make him as rich as possible make him undeniable. Maybe we could, like, buy the Cleveland Browns. I'm not crazy. I'm being reasonable here. Because if we buy the Cleveland Browns, I think we could give that name a real and true meaning. So support my GoFundMe for the NFL, the new Negro Football League, where I'm taking donations to start my own league because I really don't think Diddy will ever get a team. So I'm calling on Oprah, Shaq, Denzel, Steph Curry, anybody. If you got money, and regular niggas too on stock options. Moving on to white on white crime news, legendary rapper Eminem dropped a hot diss freestyle on Donald Trump. And I liked it, but in light of recent events, if your name's not J.J. Reddick, if you're a white guy, I don't think you should be taking any shots. Donald Trump had a press conference this morning talking about uh, the Virgin Islands where he said he had a talk with the president of the Virgin Islands. And I think he needs a therapist because, nigga, you are the president of the Virgin Islands. And I get it. His team of people probably had to explain to him first that the Virgin Islands wasn't this place that he could send Eric Trump to gain his manhood or where he could go buy his next bride. I don't know who's on your board, Donald, but look, I know a guy that needs a job really bad, Harvey Weinstein. I don't see him getting, getting much work these days because Rose McGowan, she took to Twitter and she lit Harvey Weinstein up uh, with sexual abuse claims, telling her own stories and just other dirt. And of course, Twitter did what the rest of society does when women speak out, they shut her down. And so uh, to combat that, uh, the white feminists are going to boycott Twitter. They're going to do the women boycott Twitter where they're silent for an entire day, basically giving men what they want. And I, I get it with the whole silent, the silence as a form of protest for the white feminist movement. I mean, they were the silent majority that voted Trump in, hashtag 53%. They were silent when Jamel Hill was suspended by ESPN. They were silent when Leslie Jones was being attacked. But of course... They're not silent when the N-word pops up during a Kanye West song because priorities, right? <clears throat> but hey, white feminists, you keep boycotting Twitter while women of color actually do the work. Women of color, they're probably going to gentrify that and take credit like ISIS later. And we have to keep working, and I'm calling on the men too, because Harvey Weinstein is just the tip of the iceberg. He's the 1%. There's so many else like him, and it's not just in the film industry. It's in every industry. It's in every workplace where women are. Uh, they're being assaulted, abused, uh, groped things are being said. And as men, we need to call that out. We can't just not sexually assault. We can't just not rape. We have to be anti-sexual assault. We have to call this out and we have to get these people removed because this is a problem and it's just now coming up to surface. This is Secret Black People Meeting. We'll be right back with our special guest, Courtney Banks. Uh, as a Dolphins fan, I must say, if you've got cocaine in the building, how about you give it to the quarterback who looks like he's falling asleep every goddamn game that I watch. <laughs> I literally had, one time Jay Cutler was staying with his hands on his hips during a wildcat play. How about you give him a little, and maybe he'll, you know, run. Maybe he'll throw. Maybe he'll see that there are people open. What's up everybody? I'm here with my fellow commissioner of the New Negro Football League, Darren Davis, he's an LA native. We came together and we started this league because we wanted players to be able to be black as hell. We wanted to have black owners. So Darren, explain to our viewers today, what are the incentives of helping us grow this new Negro Football League? Now that we have a GoFundMe account, if you donate $10, you might get a mug with a little something in it. If you donate $20, you get a mug shot with your face in it. Hey, cool. Whatever, there we go, baby. But right now, we are on 
a double budget where we need more than $20. So if you donate anything excessive of $20, you will get to meet one of the players slash owners because everyone is on the field taking a knee. New Negro Football League, you're not taking a knee, you're an enemy. Donate. What's up, guys? We're back on the Secret Black People Meeting with my lovely special guest, Courtney Banks. Growing up, did you get any, like, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air jokes? Like, from um, the Banks family? Not growing up, just moving here. Oh, really? Yes. So you've been a lot? I mean, I do feel like I'm looking for my real parents. I would like them to live in Bel-Air. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that would be nice. Yeah, where, where are you from? I'm from Virginia. I mean, my real parents are great. Whoa, oh. what? What? Virginia? Yes. That's funny. You're the uh, you're the second female guest on our show, but she was Angela, Angelica Mackey's also from Virginia, too. So, like, yeah, so every female guest we've had have been from Virginia. So Is that VA or is it? Doesn't matter. We're high, you guys. What is, Let's not joke. What is Virginia like? <laughs> what is um virginia it well where i lived um very white okay because i'm from uh, mississippi so was it very white yeah where you live yeah yeah i don't know it was just very white yeah. i mean in a way that i didn't even notice but yeah because like, it's just normal it's just yeah exactly yeah, so i realized that. growing up that i was so sheltered like i either the only time i saw black people were was um, if I went to church, watch BT. No, I did not watch BT. Oh, I watched I watch CMT a lot. You watch? I really CMT? like country music. So yeah. you like country music? I loved the country music. I, I'm, mm. I'm like I don't know where I'm at with it now. If I, mean, I was terrible, I would have cried. I would have cried like a little Las Vegas strip there, but I'm not an awful person. <laughs> but you really, you like legit <laughs> like country music. I loved country music. Yeah, like Reba McIntyre, Shania Twain. Really I do like Reba because of the show though. Oh, great show. Yeah. But Shania Twain really got me, and she was like very a powerful woman. So. Um, but like I only saw black people at church or if in my family and then the only other time I saw black people was like on the news committing a crime oh, so I, it's like crazy but this is this is what's important though why the media is so important because yeah. I realized moving mm -hmm. how untrue that was yeah. you know it was just because that's what I the only thing that I was shown yeah. and if you just show people those images like what we think about world third world countries or you know whatever like uh -huh. they just show us what they want the the whole storyline to be yeah. and you have to really interact with people to know what they're like yeah. and that to me like this is the most black friend i've ever had in my whole life Aww. <laughs> i'm glad to be one of them you are i'm glad to be one i'm glad to have you on secret black people meeting though we're glad to get you some more black people in the <laughs> but that's true though with the media thing because I, I ran track so i had like some african teammates and so like seeing their like some of them were, like had money Stuff like and so like it's mm -hmm. just like seeing like my friends them talk about no this is what Zimbabwe it really looks like this is what's in Nigeria like because we're only taught like they're just holding signs for like ten cents a day and stuff like that but it's cool to, so I get what you're saying well what's interesting too is like Africans do not want to be considered black, black. yeah I ran into like, that they're like absolute we're, like, we're gonna do an episode that, on that one time doesn't but. that show just how oppressed black Americans are yeah. that, like Africans are like hell no we did not get involved in all that shit I had a guy on my on my track team he was from like you know like a lot of Africans live some of them like live in England for a while mm -hmm. their parents are fluent so he was affluent and he was just kind of like you know I don't he told me from the get-go I don't want to be associated with you you know I don't want to be associated with all these black people and stuff like that and I remember we really stopped at a gas station on the way to a meet and there's some guys pants sagging and just acting real like ignorant in the store and uh, he was like, see, that's the kind of stuff that I don't want to be associated with. And I was like, bro, we're not all like that. Like, it's just like, if you probably stopped watching black movies after 1998. Like, we How do all... you combat that, though? Like, if you know. do you Do you have a problem with guys pants sagging? No, do I don't. I don't really? care. I do. Why? Why? Why do we do that? I don't know. You guys, there's already enough shit against us. Yeah. It's not like we don't. I like, mean, I don't do it. proven to have such great fashion. Look at, like, so many... Ath men's athletes, I think that that's really helping that cool. they are dressing yeah. really well. Yeah. It's, I think it's encouraging everybody else to take pride in dressing well. Yeah. But I mean, it we're already such an easy target. Yes. Don't give people. It's like if you were uh, like uh, ugly. Yeah. And then you also had you had a terrible personality. Right. <laughs> you know, right. like you, you already have this. Yeah. Don't give them an extra thing. You don't want to give them extra. No, let's I, just dress, like, let's do better. I what, get it. Like, we have to hold each other accountable. I agree. I'm sorry. I agree. My dad used to say, uh, when I wanted to start dating, he made this, um, he printed out a, a check, like a questionnaire. So you had a good dad. Okay. I had a great dad. <laughs> he printed out a questionnaire, and um, one of the things was like, and he was like, and his pants cannot be sagging. He needs to wear a belt. That's hilarious. And 
I'm pretty sure my dad has a shop, and I don't really know what's going on either with that. But yeah, so to him, like, like this is where I got a lot of my uh, my beliefs and stances on on just what it means to be black or whatever. Uh Is my parents are are older, Uh Um, so like my mom was looks white. Oh, okay. She was the first to integrate her um, county's high schools. Makes sense. So like her and her brother and her sister. And our other sister, they all look white. They're sixty percent Irish, which you found out from Twenty Three and Me, right? Oh, you know, like wow. a little ancestry thing. Okay. But because they had a little bit of black in them, they had to go on a separate bus. They had d- different books. They got spat at. And my, and just because that is what they were was a majority accepted. black, right? Yeah, and then my dad's side of the family, she, my mom got ostracized for marrying my dad because he's course. brown, right? Like, her aunt stopped talking to her because they just wanted to, like, ride life out, like, looking white. They were like, why are you well, messing this up? Well, who was the one that had the baby with the black dude? Somebody down the line. I mean, this is a long line of people, like, passing. For real. Wow. Yeah. So, um, my mom got, like, ostracized and stuff. And I was never raised to say I was mixed or, like, I've always just been raised to be black. Yeah. But when my parents, like, my aunt has told me stuff about, like, you know, when they could had to ride in the back of the bus or, like, when they had to go to segregated things. And so when they ask me stuff at Thanksgiving and Christmas, we'll have these, we'll have dinner all together, you know, and then we'll have these, like, meetings, kind of, with yeah. all of us together. Yeah. And they tell stories and, like, you know, stories about that, those kind of things. And they ask me, I just don't understand how young kids can make the N-word mean something good now because they only know what it means to them yeah i get that so yeah. it's like i i feel like i'm in the middle like i understand what people are doing with it yeah. but it, i just know i sound white as hell so if i say it it's yeah. gonna sound racist so i just don't say yeah, it i get that because me i say it a lot and i'm known for saying it a lot i say it a lot well, where are you from? From mississippi? from mississippi okay yeah well I mean, it's I just know. like so it's just like i say it a lot i say it on stage a lot and i've even been told by black and white that i might say that word a little bit do i personally care too much yeah. Do I personally care? No. But do you ever think about what it... Because don't... I mean, like, I, that's that's the big question, right? Like, why can't white people say the N-word? Oh, I know exactly why. Why? Because when they used it, it was for something. It was for, it was the call. Black people ignorant. It was used to suppress, used to oppress and do all these things. And then when black people, they turned into this term of endearment. And so now you live in a world that's in this country that's basically sla- shaped by slavery, shaped by white supremacy and all these things. So you get all these benefits of being white. You get all these privileges of being white. And so now you want this one word that we've... Oh, they want it so you bad. You got all they of that. They want it so bad. You got all of that. And now you got this... You you want this one word that yeah. we turn into this term of endearment, which right. is like crazy to me. But I'm just kind of like, there's so many things like you can do as a white person. There's so many things that I can't do as a black person. And you just want this one word that I have, mm. this one thing. It's, it's crazy to me. The, the thing that bothers me with that argument of like well how come it's bad if you say it this way yeah. or it's different if a black person says it we cannot be ignorant to the fact that i mean the whole election what last election was ran on emotion right yeah. people were running on however they felt whether they felt a little misogynistic whether they felt a little racist whether they uh-huh. felt like their jobs were going and or whether they felt like mad that there was a black president whatever it was it was emotion yeah. emotion runs life Oh, yeah. So when you hear a, a black, when a black person tell, says the N word to me in like a nice way, I'm always like, oh my God, I feel so loved. Aww. Like you do. Because you, but you can hear like, you can hear how someone is saying something yeah, to you. And so for people to even question that, it's like, you know why you can't say it. Yeah, it's exactly. not going to be that same affection. Because like with black people, it's just like, it's this whole like, I feel like black people as a whole, like we're like this family almost. Like we're like this yeah. thing. Because like, have you ever been somewhere and something crazy will go down and you'll be like, there'll be like one other black person. Y'all, <laughs> y'all just like, make eye contact just like I got you nigga like I got you or like, when, whenever like a sad to say a mass shooting happens and you're like yeah like mm, check that headline real quick you know no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm the com- were you at show go up the night it happened at the comedy yeah. show mm-hmm. yeah I mean a couple of us were out there and a couple of black people were like looking at each other like please don't be black oh my god cause like it's just like those things <laughs> when those things happen we have to pay for it as a monolith. When know? I lived in D.C., so I lived in Virginia, right? Yeah. The D.C. sniper oh, was when I was in high school. Oh, no. And he was hitting, like, the mall that I went to. Yeah. Um, and we, so we had to, like, cancel a football game and, like, be on lockdown, like, for a few days or something. And when it came out that he was black. Ooh, shoot. And with D.C. having such a... Like, the like, disappoint, like... The dis- mm-hmm. We cannot do that shit. 
And no, that's, that's what I'm we saying. Can't. We can't. We can't. We, we, we cannot, cannot give do. another reason. No, because it's just like when things like that happen, it's like the rest of us pay for it too. It's like this whole, it's like the, that, that's why I feel like, that's why I feel like Barack Obama winning president, black people are like paying for it. It's like whether good or bad, when we do something, the rest of the group has, that's how we're treated. We're treated like this huge monolith. But if a white person does something like that, they're a lone wolf. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, so right, it's, right. it's crazy. Like you said, like I, I bet that was, because you were in Virginia, I bet that was rough. I just wonder where that like need of, I, I just, because it, it, it seems to go back quite far. I just wonder mm -hmm. what that need of, like, needing to be the supreme race or needing to be, because you can track it back mm -hmm. so far yeah. through your European history and all that stuff. Like, yeah. I understand, like, needing to, if you were a scavenger or something, like, needing to secure land and needing to have a tribe and all that stuff. But we've got laws and we've got, like, you know, we're supposed to be representing each other in, in government mm -hmm. and stuff. But it's still, like, it really does, I feel like, a lot of times come down to this thing of, like, I got to root for my black person, I got to root for my white person. Like, Lisa, it's not, Lisa Ray said, yeah, I, I root I for root everybody black. black. <laughs> That's how I live my life. I'm like, I root for everybody black. That's how I see it. Unless they're Eric Abernante. I love that guy. He's, <laughs> he's great. He's great. He's great. You know, but I, I, I got a lot of white friends. I love, I love my white people. I do. Because, like, especially, like, when a white person gets it, you know, like, it's just like, wow, like, you're amazing. You know, like, you're a unicorn. It's great. I mean, it's just, it's just, to me, and I think, like, I've had black people tell me I'm not, you know, like, the right kind of black person or whatever. That's not cool. But to me, like, where I came from, I was homecoming queen. That pissed a lot of white people off, I'm right? Sure and so was my sister. My sister was prom queen. Oh, like, shoot. you know? That was, that was everybody. <laughs> and, <was. laughs> and, like, uh, I was president of my class all the time, and I was, like, super, like, I was involved in everything. You were um, in a sorority in college, too, right? Yeah. Okay. And I think that it, I felt like I had to hold myself to a standard yeah. of, I cannot mess this up. Yeah. You know, my parents mm -hmm. worked too hard. Yeah. To, <laughs> you, to mess think, that up. Do you think a lot of times where like black kids that are raised, I've asked people this before, black kids that are raised in quote unquote good homes and stuff, do you feel like there's like this real pressure on that black kid to succeed? Because it's just kind of like my black parents did what a lot of other black parents weren't able to do, so that means I have mm -hmm. to go over and beyond. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think it matters what household you're from. I think every black kid feels like that. Just that pressure to really I, I do think something? it's, yeah. And, and to me, I see so many inconsistencies in, so because, I, like, I almost feel like a double agent a lot. Like, okay. and I really want to go into politics eventually. Hey, do you think? And my parents were always like, you should be a lawyer. And I was like, no, because I feel like they're watch, watch them emails. <laughs> right? Watch, watch them emails. I, don't I put everything out there. All my scandals will be out before yeah, well, I that ever will, run. That will ruin a whole election, apparently. So you can't say anything about people me. People care more about emails than rape, so. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So watch that. That's true. But um, I think that, like, to me, I could see, like, I, I went to a really good, I went to, like, a private school when I was younger, okay. and then I went to a really nice public school, and then I got, because I'd gone to the private school, I was advanced in learning, so then I got into the gifted program, then I got to go to uh, a gifted program within my high school. Okay. We went on field trips every month. We had access to, like, the, like, the best of everything. Okay. And we were only like 15 people from my school, 15 people from another school. And the taxpayer dollars went towards this. Why can't every kid get that kind of education? Right. Why am I getting this education when there are people it's, who don't have books that are even up to date? It's, it's ridiculous. But what's annoying is I was in that environment and I would say stuff like that. People don't. People and do people were up. like, you're yeah. ungrateful yeah. or you're not patriotic yeah. or... You know, like like when 9-11 happened, my mom works at the Pentagon. My mom worked at the Pentagon. Right. She worked there when it happened. Oh, she God. lost friends. She was like, we should not go to war. Yeah. I said we should not go to war, and I was, like, ostracized. But it was, like, yeah, calling, you know, French fries freedom fries and shit. This was before your time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. That's crazy. But, like, things, like, seeing those things, this is what bothers me, is you can talk to a white person sometimes and say that. And they almost don't want to believe it's true that that kind of inequality does Yeah, it's this whole entitlement thing. Like, I'm from Mississippi, terrible school system. Uh, I went to a college in Oklahoma, terrible school system out there. I was majoring in social work, so I worked with a lot of kids that were mm -hmm. in these really bad school systems. So I saw it for myself. And it was like, you'll have a, like, uh, my, my college was in Tulsa. Uh, there's a little town called Jinx that's really rich, really white. 
they get a new football stadium and all this crazy shit every year. It's great school and all this kind of funding and everything. You can go up the street 30, 40 minutes. There's black kids that don't have the, don't have the proper books. They, you know, they the, the environment's really bad. The school's run down. All these kind of things. <gasps> So and so, it's, and it's crazy, and it's because a lot of people don't understand public schooling is funded off property taxes, so the schools are funded around who lives around it. So if you have people... And that's renting, why they redistrict so often. Exactly, all the redlining. So when you're renting out of apartments and or your the houses are small, the money going to those schools is minimal uh, compared to whatever the federal budget is. And, like, and that, if people don't want you in their district, they can say, exactly. well, let's redistrict this little part out. Exactly. Just like with gerrymandering, yeah. which is how they district, uh, or how they um, figure they out what the voting elected, districts are. Like, yeah. How likely they are to vote for whatever, oh, yeah. how, whichever way, which are getting through the Supreme Court, hopefully right now, about gerrymandering, because it's a fucking bullshit thing. You yeah. should Google it. It's terrible. But, but, yeah. but a lot of people don't know about gerrymandering. But those are the things that bother me. It when people have things okay, like like the middle class, like the, the, the white people who voted for Donald Trump. Yeah. They had things okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but they felt like they weren't getting enough. And to be honest, they weren't because we've been killing our middle class for decades. True. And, and that's understandable. But they wanted to, but to believe that we could blame it on like people who are poor or uneducated yeah. or whatever. Well, who can curl, who, why are, it's weird that they can't see that it's the 1% right? oppressing us. And I that's what they The 1%, they control the media and the narrative. All of so it. of course, why would they want you to direct the blame to them? To them. The, why, but we direct the blame to poor people. And so I, I, they, I, they, I they teach actually, this thing like we're feet, like, like if you need Medicare or if you need uh, I've had food stamps. If you, I'm yeah. a fucking struggling I'm trying to right now. I'm in the process. And it's at the moment. so hard to get the process to get. And this is why I want to do politics too, because yeah. I've I've had an abortion. I've had a DUI. I've had been on food stamps. I'm a regular fucking person. Hey, hey, what's you know? And I have no shame in those things. Yeah. And be, I feel like there should be people who actually know what it's like to go through that. Because if you have to go try to get food stamps, you have to fill out all these forms. Yeah. You have to try to call. Yeah. What if you don't have a phone? Okay, that's a thing. Try to do it online. I tried to do it online twice. Didn't go through. What if you don't have a computer? What if you have to work three jobs just to live where you're living exactly. and you don't have time to go down to the office? Exactly. They make it so difficult. So for people to be mooching off of the system is so small. And it's just like they call it mooching off the system when you're on a welfare program, but they don't talk about all these subsidies and uh, tax cuts and all these things for rich people. Right. They're just they're good businessmen. Right. They're the one mooching. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like I, I interned for a production company and it's just like uh, you could have dinner with some big TV star. Let's say... Let's say we're taking Michael B. Jordan out to eat. Mm -hmm. We spend two thousand dollars on taxes. Write, write it off taxes. Is that not taking advantage of the government? I don't know. But any you know, person. people people who are working two jobs just trying to like make a way for their kids. Right. Which you don't want to give proper education. Here's the, here's the, this is the way that I try. I broke up with a guy because of this one. Wow, you dedicated. Uh, well, he was real stupid. I worked at Hooters, so <laughs> I worked at Hooters during during college, okay. and I met this white dude, and he was dumb. And he really believed that people mooshed off of the system. Yeah, this is before I it's ever... It's so ingrained in it's the so society, ingrained. so you'll pick it up, you know? And he... And this is before I ever needed, like... I was just in college and working and, like, getting extra money. Like, yeah. I didn't need any help with right. anything. And I was like, okay, cool. Because you were born where you were born. Do you understand that you could live somewhere where another county, they have completely different textbooks? Or they cut music programs, which right. means that there's a lot more time on kids' hands to do things. Yeah. They don't have time to enrich themselves. That's You can make a career doing that, exactly. but you're not helping those people. There are people where you don't have different ways of learning, mm -hmm. where you actually can make curriculum. Sometimes not even enough teachers. Or you, don't, you have apathetic teachers. You, yeah. you, you know, it's just, I was like, how, so it's, why do you deserve this more? Because you were born just exactly. here. But not there, and exactly. it's like he didn't see that, and I was like, oh, and here's the thing: if we teach people more, they're gonna be more educated. We give them good sexual education, yeah. not just abstinence right. ed education. In these poor states, teen pregnancy is so high. It's so high, but that's what they want yeah. because they want people to stay poor. Exactly. So if you don't give people the appropriate amount of knowledge, you can keep them in whatever system you so want. So true. So, you know they. Don't give proper sexual education. You heard your first time. Overtime is fun. David, you look like Ice Cube if you messed around and ate a triple double. Somebody walked through the door earlier, so I have to.
happens when you shoot at an apartment. Uh, anyway, we're still here with my lovely guest, Courtney Banks. She's in here dropping knowledge, talking about her uh, future political career. I'm going to vote for her, regardless of what her emails say. This is getting real serious right? for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, now you just, you just now she's running for president. Yeah, yeah. Now um, I have a political career. Right. Now she has a political career. But uh, you're an actress as well, right? I act, yeah. Okay. So tell me kind of like what you think about this whole like Harvey Weinstein creep business going on in Hollywood right now. All the people telling their stories, some people coming out and saying that, uh, yeah, I knew about this for a long time, all that. What do you, what do you right. think? I mean, I think a lot of what needs to be said about it has been said. Like, obviously, it's terrible and unexcusable. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we can all agree on that, but I think the deeper issue is things like Rose McGowan getting blocked from Twitter right. for calling him out for right. his sexual harassment. We have a president who threatens all of our lives. I have anxiety that I like have been diagnosed for, and when he says like threats to North Korea, yeah, that's crazy. I cannot get through a whole day. Like I have such bad anxiety, wow. <laughs> and. He's allowed to do those things and taunt people, yeah. but somebody call like a woman calling out a, a powerful man for something that he's yeah. done is in a, is just not okay. Right, it's crazy. Um, and it's this whole stigma. It's like almost like it's with sexism, it's with racism, it's with any issue. The person calling it out and telling the truth is like worse than the actual action that happened. Right, because we hate the truth. Yeah, I mean, we hate the we truth. hate the truth, and we're always trying to save face in the way America moves on symbols. And so it's America like, is is the best PR company seriously ever made. Seriously, like we have this like amazing, we have this amazing advertisement of freedom and, and liberties and respecting each other and yeah. the melting pot. But then when you give your opinion, then we hate each other. Yeah, but uh, but why why because we enact laws that um, benefits some and we get scared that we're not gonna. It's it's this thing that we're because we all don't look alike usually. Countries that look alike have yeah. more peace. Yeah. Because we don't look alike, we are, we're almost a, we're scared that we're all gonna stab each other in the back. <laughs> so it's like we make these laws and stuff that help each other. And I think that with capitalism involved in that, yeah. you have a person like Harvey Weinstein who's bringing a lot of revenue. Yes. You know. Because he, he had a lot of revenue to begin with. Right. Where he's from. But it, I mean, and I think that this is the bigger discussion is that it's just on dudes. Like, I see so yes. many dudes say stuff. Same. I mean, being a comic, you see dudes say things. Today, I, ha I have been talking about, on my podcast, guys at the comedy store or within the comedy scene yes. harassing women. And women have opened up on my podcast about those things. Yeah. And one of my guy friends was so mad at me. And I was like, you're clearly mad at me because I don't want to date you or I don't want to fuck you or whatever it is. Yeah. And he was calling me a whore. He was calling me a slut. Like yeah. all of the, just, and I was like, I know why you're doing it, but yeah. I don't understand if you see why you're doing exactly. it. Exactly. Today he sent me a text message and he was like, I was just really thinking about all of this stuff. And he was like, I'm so sorry. Like I was a dick wow. and I really did antagonize you. Wow. And, and he did. Yeah. And, I hope more things like that can happen. Yeah, because it doesn't just start at this high Harvey Weinstein, I'm a powerful man, I can do what I want. It starts at the frat parties. It starts on the comedy scenes. It starts at the house parties and things it's like that. It's a thing of not liking exactly. the truth. It's, it's not cool to be the person at the party. If, if somebody makes a rape joke, for you to be like, uh, Chad, not cool. Yeah. You know, like, I, it's I not know, cool to be that The person. guy, uh, Jason Momoa, that's on Game of Thrones, yeah. he cracked the joke at the, at the little thing or whatever, saying, like, you know, it's great being on the show. I get to rape beautiful women. That's kind of weird. Yeah, but I, I mean, it was in terms of... Okay, I love Jason Momoa. And I'm yeah. Just, I like it in terms too. of... He was like, it's cool to be on a sci-fi show because in those realms, he's like... You this guys is, can't deny that you guys want to rape women sometimes. I'm, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Well, that's good. But it's just like him crack. I, I, don't, like, I see, but see, even I'm apologizing for his behavior yeah. because I've been taught so much... That that's okay. No, to apologize for men. Like, they're... Yeah. Basically, when you are... are socialized into society so apologize for stuff you did. have to justify in your mind what a guy did yeah so if a guy you know uh says something about your boobs well your boobs are are out yeah yeah it's but you know what i have like, big boobs and right. i want to be comfortable so right. like why can't you just be an adult exactly and 
fucking just respect that I'm a person. It's this whole thing of telling women they have to dress a certain way to appease. Right. Well, you never know how a guy could act. Well, no, we need to nip that in the butt. That guy doesn't need to act. That's but the problem. We do the same thing with black people, right? Yeah. So black people should assimilate to white culture. Exactly. So don't wear a fro. I'm wearing a wig right now. Right. I mean, mainly because I'm lazy as fuck. <laughs> really, that's like, that was hungover. But that's true. Like, there are kids getting kicked out of schools because they're wearing yeah, their financial. Yeah, black people have to do things to make white people feel to comfortable. To feel comfortable. So women have to do things Same to make men, men feel comfortable. comfortable so if ridiculous. they take out their dick, we have to somehow make that situation yeah, it's funny bearable. when we do it. It's funny. It's or stupid. it's cute or it's just a guy being a guy. Like, exactly. And that's the problem. Boys, <laughs> that whole boys are just being boys thing, that's the thing. We need to, well, I guess we need to reshape what it is to be a boy then because like, that's bad. You know what's really, the sh- big stressor is... Being like where we are, yeah. and we were talking about this earlier, you guys, <laughs> we're like friends, yeah. um, but we were talking about, we're at this level where we're coming up in comedy, Yeah. and to me, yes, lots of guys have said weird things to me, and done creepy things to me, yeah. but at times it feels like, don't make a big deal about that, you know, yeah. it's not a big deal, yeah. but then when you hear they've been doing it to all these other people, then you That's feel, a problem. It's a pattern. so something like a Harvey Weinstein, if people are not talking about it, mm-hmm. which these actresses, it is so difficult to be an actress in Hollywood, oh my gosh, to sure. make it in Hollywood. I heard a black actress, literally a casting director told her the reason why certain black actresses aren't getting in is because y'all won't do what these other girls will do for me. That's crazy. That's true. You have to literally like sell your soul. That's, that's why, like, if I don't make it, I don't really don't care. Yeah, I'm like, way. you know what? Uh, uh, that's there a good are things way to I'm not gonna it, do. So, yeah. But there are people who who will do anything, and there are guys who need their ego stroked so much that they will ask anything yeah. of them. And it's this whole having power so it, over one. It, it feeds into itself. Yeah. And so if we're not talking to each other, if we're not calling each other out at these low levels, exactly. that's how people progress. Yes. So I feel guilty because. We all know that there are creepy guys who will slide into your DMs and say some weird shit or yeah. yell at you in public because they just you didn't have sex with them or something. Yeah. And that's the really hard balance yeah. because I don't like to be a drama. I, I don't want to be a drama queen. And people know that when I'm dramatic, like I'll cry in public. I'll make a big scene if I fucking need to, yeah. like if I feel it. It's okay. But I don't. I, I'm so desensitized to guys saying weird shit to me because it hasn't happened so much and it's been okay for so long. Right. That I don't even think and about usually, it anymore. And just like when women, and I've seen this in like my own family, there's been, you know, just with uh, stories I've heard in my whole family, in my own family where like cousins or aunts back in the day when they were younger, if they would come to an adult and say like, well, so-and-so did this or touch me or whatever, it's just kind of like, okay, be quiet. Like, it's yeah. like we don't want to cause a scene. It's like saving face is more important than my body and things like that. And so for, like you said, women are so apologetic to men and these mm-hmm. things because they've been taught since this age, like, I just need to get over it. And that's really the problem. Like, I'll see, like you said, with black people, they'll apologize for things if they make a white person feel uncomfortable. I'm like, no, don't apologize for that. Like, they need they need to be able to operate and be around people. And so that's why, like, guys, like, we have to, we have to, I guess with, with men, we have to, like, create a culture to where making women uncomfortable is just going to be unacceptable from now on. You guys have to call each other out. Exactly. I mean, it's it's really that thing of, like, and you've got every guy group has this, has the dude exactly. who go, always goes too far. Right. Every guy group has that group. Right. I know that. Right. And you and you're like, it's kind of like um, every girl group has that girl who gets way too drunk. Yeah. And like wants to flash her tits or something. Yeah. You got to stop her from flashing her tits, yeah. right? That's what I would do. Yeah. You got to stop him from trying to grow. You just got to be like, it's too much. Exactly. Because then you get these things like uh, Harvey Weinstein. Nobody stopped him. And the thing is. There are people that are reported they knew what was going on. People on the board, sure. people that worked with them, they they knew it. So I'll, I'll never put blame on one of these actresses that were in their 20s and they just didn't tell anybody because there's so much shame that comes with it. I put the blame on the people that were working with him that knew about it. That's why that's I hate. The that's why part. I hate when people are just like, "Oh well, if they got if they got sexually assaulted, why didn't they say something? Because it could happen to another girl." Well, the thing is, they don't know if this has happened to another exactly. girl. Exactly. It's like and that's it's just like female this, gossip has got to happen. And so it's just like, that. and I hate I hate the way Hollywood works because you're literally using somebody's passion and their dream against them to have this power over them to where I can do whatever you want because you want this so bad and you're not going to tell anybody because I'm big, you know. And so like, like I heard the recording of Harvey talking to this. European model, and it was it was really just disgusting. She said she was uncomfortable like fifty times, and he, he literally said like, "Well, if you don't do this, you'll never see me again." I was like, "What?" 
This is, and these are guys with wives and kids and all this kind of thing. So you have these wife are and kids. also politicians. These yes. are also managers at Lowe's. Exactly. These it's are across also all spectrums. Managers at Hooters, yeah. which is like Shit, they're I'm supposed sure. to protect us from not getting harassed. I feel bad. One for of my managers things. at Hooters got fired for harass, sexually That's harassing the women there. That's the thing, because like I flirt with waitresses every now and then, but whenever I go to Hooters, I just don't, because I'm just kind of like <laughs> they've probably been getting hit on all day. Like I didn't have I had a Hooters waitress even like give me their number one time and like talk to me, but I was still just kind of like, eh. So I'm like, you've been getting hit on like all day, and I know it. So the first time I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like I'm just gonna be like. Fuck you, like you know what I'm saying. So I just. But uh, any no any waitressing job really. I've worked many places. If like you're the, ever nice to a guy, they're like, oh, she's into. Me. I've heard and they like lay it off. I've heard of like uh, I've heard stories from friends that are waitresses that guys put their hands in their skirts and groping them. It, it, it's like I would never do something like that. So to me, it's just like what? It's like a white person finding out about racism for the first time. <laughs> and so I'm just like, guys do that to women that are on their job and they're not getting in trouble for this? And she said, yeah, my manager didn't do anything about it because they it's, tip. It's so weird because, well, mm, see, this was the nice thing about, this is the nice thing, and this is where wealth comes into it with the Harvey Weinstein thing. Mm -hmm. My parents were paid for my college. I didn't have any debt. They paid for my sorority fees, like everything. Mm -hmm. I did not want for anything. I wanted to work at Hooters. I was a sociology major. I didn't really understand why women would work there. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't like cheerleading when I was in high school, and I thought mm -hmm. it was really sexist. Yeah. And then I uh, tried out for it, and I was like, oh, this is really fucking hard. <laughs> if I don't like something, I want to get to know more about it. And so, so see why. I met some cool. really, like, amazing women who were, like, going through grad school and, like, really smart chicks. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized a lot of stuff about other ways that men value um beauty and women like there were girls that I was like they're not very cute but guys yeah. would always ask for them and they're like she's just so funny and I was like that's yeah. so cool to know that guys really do like guys would just come to be like come and hang out yeah so that was a good thing to know but like in terms of wealth I had a guy say to me well I've had I had a guy say to me he was disappointed they were mad because I was black so I was like you can have any other fucking waitress you want that's fine I don't know wow. <laughs> so that's for Jacob. That's happened to a friend of mine before. It, yeah, people Sweet. do that. Yeah. Um, but then I I was transferred a table. Guys were already drinking. and um, That sounds great. And I got them a new picture. I put it on the table. I was checking on other tables. I came back. They hadn't been drinking their beer. And I was like, oh, are you guys okay? And they're like, we're waiting for you to pour it. And I was like, you have two hands. What? And they, were, and they were like, there goes your tip. And I was like, I don't give a shit. Like, if... If you were, wow. if you're in a position where you don't need it, yeah, you don't have to take shit, yeah, right, yeah. But if you're in a position where you do, yeah, need that job or need that break or need that whatever, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna do things because people rely on you because you have to pay your rent. Sure. Because those are real things. Because like reading the story like with Gwyneth Paltrow and stuff like that, she's like, you know, I like I needed that role, but she said like I was so scared, you know, and that that's it's just crazy. How that could work, and it's it, it's it's interesting to me how many like stories keep coming out every day, and then more and more people. So hopefully that, and I, I hate I kind of hate that that's the way that this has to end because I hate the idea of people having to relive their trauma just to have a problem fixed. Like why can't somebody say there's sexual assault in Hollywood and we need to stop it, and that makes people stop it? Why do I have to tell a 30 minute story of how somebody groped me and made me feel uncomfortable and relive that trauma in front of you just to get you to care? Mm, the like, same way why we have to keep talking about how black people keep getting and killed I, by I can't, people on I can't, like, I hate when people share those police shooting videos on Facebook. I can't They're watch them. I, yeah. For my mental health, like, I've had a really bad experience with police. And so watching those videos, like, I see myself yeah. in that stuff. And so it's just like, I can't watch those. And so it's just like, the thing is, for some white people, they're never going to get it until they watch a black dude running away from a cop get nine shots in his back for no reason. At the end of the day, I mean, honestly, the Las Vegas shooting, and I don't know if anybody said this or wants to say this, and uh -huh. it's probably not a good thing to say, but it's true. Okay. Could not have been better that it was a white shooter and a country concert. Yeah. Quite honestly. That's crazy. Because the race is, the, the racial divide in this country is so bad right now. Yeah. If that, had been, up. If that had been like a, a hip hop concert or something, well, like that would have been. Well, hip hop concerts are white kids. <laughs> well, I feel like it wasn't, a, I don't know. All the I'm just saying, I feel like if that had been anything racial, that would have been. Oh, that would have been terrible. Terrible. That would have been terrible. So, like, in a way, I was a little relieved that that happened, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, you got, like, 
we, we have to keep talking yeah. about it. But I mean, that's a, that, it all comes down to money. Like, we just need more. We yeah. need to keep talking about the stuff and pushing people stuff. People have what happened like to Weinstein. NFL owners. Yeah. They need to own What happened team. to Weinstein that needs to happen to these creeps. You just need to get removed. But people are really scared about losing their jobs. And I think now, today, in 2017, with the social media yeah. and videos and cameras. Because other people are sharing stories about other people, like Rose yes. with this Amazon chief guy right. and all Jeff this kind of stuff. Yeah. With that, we have so much more power yes. than we did before. Same. Like when Gwyneth when when Paltrow yeah. was when Gwyneth Paltrow was getting assaulted by Harvey Weinstein, there weren't no cell phones, no, like there like weren't. flip phones that you could like exactly. take a video of. Now I'm just like somebody tries to do something to me, like I'm recording you and it's on Twitter it in right ten away. seconds, you know? Right. And so it's just like social media has been, like you said, just such a great avenue for people of color, women, the LGBT community, for our voices to be, you know, pro like projected because Really, if you had privilege and you didn't care, you just were able to not care. But now it's so in your face, you have to. And that's why like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm talking, I'm talking about racism. Because this is the first time in their life they're actually having to talk about it. Right. And you can't just skate away from it. Because I feel like even people of color, even at this point, are just like, no, I want what's mine. And I should be treated like a regular person. Women are at the point now where they're like, I should be treated just as an equal, which you guys should. And so then, I think a lot of wanting to be involved in the workplace was a lot of accepting sexual harassment. Yes. Because we were only allowed ridiculous. to be secre secretaries and yeah. we had to do weird shit. And, right. uh, you know, the, the sweethearts and the honeys and like all that kind of name call. Like, yeah. if, if you had called that out then, right. you would be out of a job. Exactly. You know, so it's exactly. like we're at this point where we, I think, we're secure enough in that enough of us know what's right. Exactly. To yeah, do what's right. That, so so how are you gonna call out men? Me? How am I gonna call out men? I mean, I feel like I do it already because I was just raised to do that. Like if I, I have friends that have even gotten mad at me because I'll tell like, hey, that, that's not right. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like calling that out, making sure, and always making sure I'm in the right way. Like I don't need to be doing anything because that's gonna look hypocritical. You know what I'm saying? So watching my own actions, but definitely when I just when you hear something, you nip it in the bud because like I wouldn't want you to say something, think it's okay, and then end up acting on it 10, 15 years from now. You know what I'm saying? And so I'd rather nip it in the bud now with you joking about it or even saying something mm -hmm. along those lines. And it's, it's just like, and my whole thing is like, I always want the women that are around me, whether we're hanging out, whether we're writing, whether we're doing whatever, I want you to feel comfortable around me. I don't want you to ever feel like, because like they're saying, Ashley Tisdale, she did Scary Movie 5. She said, I didn't ever meet with Harvey. I talked to him on the phone, but Multiple people told me, don't be in a room by themselves. With, don't be in a room Jesus. by yourself. Can you my imagine is, if that's what somebody says about my you? My thing is, okay, if you're already warning women, don't be in a room by yourself with Harvey Weinstein. Maybe Harvey Weinstein's the problem, not the room and the girl. 100%. Like that in the butt. And so that, that's just the way I see it. Just calling it out where it is now. And if I see it, do something about it. Because I'm just the type of person, I'm going to be as whatever. You can call me social justice warrior, whatever you want to call it. If I see a problem, I want it fixed. I don't care if that means me not having a job later. I don't care if that means whatever. Because I, I feel like the real truth will always be, you know, you'll be taken care of. So that's just what I, I mean. I mean, that's what it takes. People not, not really. Because, I mean, it's just like, all, I'm really angry at all the people over the years that have known what this guy has been doing and probably doing the same thing. And yeah, but, like, you know, people get really scared. And I think that we, we want to think that people are, I always look for the good in people. Yeah. But, I think I'm very naive to how dark people can be yeah. and how much they will try to save their own backs. Yeah. And, and people will throw people under the bus to yeah. save their own backs. And so if that means keeping somebody's terrible secret or or maybe, you know, he has something on them, like you, it, there's just yeah. so many that's, and, and that's, cause he, politics. Harvey in Weinstein them. is not the only guy doing this. No. It's probably a Justice League and the niggas doing this stuff. Yeah. And so it's just like there, there's people probably that know certain things that were doing it with them. But here's the thing about calling people out early that I want people to really understand is that if you get called out early enough, like now, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you really try to change your actions and be decent, I'm not going to vilify you yeah, exactly. or ostracize you or whatever. Because the whole point of that is to you foster change to be better. and rehabilitation. Right. That, but you really have to make those steps because... Exactly. It does feel shitty to call people out when, like, they don't even have any. You're like, oh, they're barely even doing anything, whatever. But you cannot let people who are showing those very mm -hmm. clear signs of being harassers yeah. and sexual abusers 
you cannot let them progress if they're not going to face. My thing is, I think of who this victim could be. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the more important thing, not this person's feelings. Right. So, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having I me. Appreciate it. Like you, you're a really fun guest. Drop some knowledge on these people. I, I thank you for coming. Second female guest <laughs> on the uh, on the show. But we've only we've done what five episodes, so we're doing that's forty percent female. Pretty good ratio. We do we we trying to do it right. Be better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she was Comedy's thinking. Comedy is a very male dominated field. Really I feel like it you're really, doing a great job. It really is, but I, I really want to try. To not make that an excuse, though. Ah, you know but it's true. No, but, but I mean, you just take people. I have a podcast. It's called Hot Tricks Aren't Funny. Yeah, what good thing. Um, it's called Hot Tricks Aren't Funny. But I mean, no, I think you, you got to get people when it's in a good time so you have good, meaningful conversations. Yeah. Don't don't let that. That can be a big thing that people try to really shame you on. Yeah. But oftentimes, too, I think it's a detriment to pull up women sometimes when they're not ready. Okay. So, I don't mean just in podcasts, but, you know, like on stage and and it's just like everybody. Go yeah. through the, the grunt of it. When you're right. really interested in somebody, ask them to have them up, you know? Like, yeah, you're right. But make an effort, but you, what you're doing, but, like, you know, just follow you. you you're a good person. Appreciate it. You don't have any Harvey Weinstein She thinks I'm a good person. Ain't that sweet? That's cool. Some people would disagree with F them. <laughs> Whatever, won't be all hating niggas. Uh, but anyway, Courtney, where can we find you on social media? If you don't want us to find you on social media, you don't have to say. I that. would like you to find me on social media and say okay. nice things. Um, uh, Twitter at Courtney Banks, Instagram the Courtney Banks, and uh, follow my podcast on Instagram at Hot Chicks Aren't Funny, and you can see it on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Okay, wow, she's on a lot. We just on YouTube. We don't have a budget. I wish I was on YouTube. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, that was Secret Black People Meeting episode five. Then we got to do better. I think that's what we learned. Call each other out. Then we have got to do better. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys.